Welcome everyone. A uh, warm good evening to all of you. Great. Welcome everyone. A uh, warm good evening to all of you. So today's session is going to be uh, exciting as we are going to talk about uh, identifying red flags in relationships. Um, and this is also a little bit of a touchy topic because, um, you know, uh, this requires a lot of mindfulness, a lot of awareness to actually see through the thin lines of so many things that happen in our lives with people, right? So at no point of time, uh, we are going to label people, judge people from the angle that, oh, their behavior is like this or that. But uh, today's session is going to be about becoming more aware and mindful of uh, the red flags that show up show up all the time, right? Um, early warning signs. They are like uh, really early warning signs when we are getting into a relationship, we have just started or we have been into one. Um, and um, even though we see them, many a times we ignore them, many a times we uh, overlook them and we think uh, and give ourselves, you know, different reasons to do so. And in fact, many a times it happens unconsciously. Right. We don't even think through. We just take it too lightly, even though it is bothering us. It is um, killing us in many areas, but yet we ignore it. So let's talk about that today. And um, a few of you are new here. Uh, how these open discussions go is uh, there is no such one way delivery we are going to do. It's going to be an open call. All of you are welcome to join and to uh, share your viewpoints and uh, talk. So we are going to keep it conversation based um, and um, keep it going. Whenever you want to talk, you can just raise your hand and uh, uh, you can uh, we will call your name and you can talk. Right. And it's not just about asking questions. If you have any story, any past uh, story, any experience that you have that can uh, that can help other people in the call benefit. Uh, please, please do uh, share. So let me start with my story. You know, so I have done this so many times in my life in relationships, especially really, uh, romantic relationships, uh, in friendships also, in uh, um, um, family also, but uh, especially when it comes to romantic relationships, oh God, I have been uh, crazy about uh, uh, ignoring the red flags. So. Uh, a lot of uh, these red flags came to me when, you know, I saw manipulative behavior. I saw extremely controlling, extremely dominating behavior, uh, right? So I'm using the word extreme here. So uh, uh, what I'm trying to say is when the anger, when the um, impulsiveness, when the uh, imposition and all of these things uh, cut through the chase and they're they are, they are like um, in the um, high category. So sometimes we all feel angry. Sometimes we all get fearful. Sometimes, uh, you know, knowingly, unknowingly, every single person would uh, manipulate, not intentionally, not consciously, unconsciously. But what is that point where it becomes a red flag? I saw that, uh, you know, um, I would keep um, just ignoring these things and giving myself a reason. Oh, maybe na, uh, this person was feeling this way and that is why he said, talk to me like that. Or he asked me to do something or not do something. Or he asked me not to go to the party. Or maybe he was making sexual advances towards me too early in the relationship where I had already explained that I'm not comfortable. Right. And yet... Um, that person would manipulate me and tell me that, no, uh, but uh, we are in a relationship. This is important to me. This is my need. This is blah, blah, um, and everything. And um, uh, every time uh, you say something, it is taken in a different way. Uh, there are many people who um, uh, you know, continue to remain in the past and uh, uh, even though they have come into a new relationship with you, continue to talk about the past and their excess and they are not over them. Um, and uh, uh, what else? So this this one has not happened with me, but I see this happening too often. 
another thing is gaslighting that can happen um jealousy that uh, uh, you know why are you talking to other girls why are you talking to other boys um uh, completely ignoring how you feel and uh, every time maybe just uh, pleasing you or maybe uh, just um, you know telling you that uh, i um, there is no communication required it's your fault and um, cutting you off from um, other relationships of your life and uh, too much anger or maybe substance uh, substance abuse or uh, any any kind of uh, um you know these uh, different kind of things happening in the relationship so there are tons of red flags that we can uh, identify in these relationships um usually which uh, the ones that i have faced have uh, been about manipulation uh, gaslighting uh, and uh, making me feel that i'm not worthy or trying to control me or dominate me so that's a little bit of my story uh, right but now we would like to hear from you guys as well that what all kind of red flags have you observed in your relationship was it name calling was it blaming you was it playing drama was it playing games uh, and also um, i would be really honest i was also the one who was playing this game along so if any of you feel that you too have been playing this game along with your partners then ex partners feel free to share that there's no judgment but uh, that will actually help us understand the entire picture even better uh, we will cover some of the red flags as much as we can count and then we will go to the point where we can see why we ignored them in the first place so over to you guys um, any of you would like to share a red flag from your life which you actually ignored so just raise your hand and you can start talking Yes, Amrita, go ahead. In the first place, in the, my marriage, I, I, I was asked to adjust for everything, for, for to <clears throat> uh, right from my attire, right, right from the, how I sit, how I behave, uh, how I talk to the other, like everything was uh, considered as a uh, insult to them. When I sit, uh, putting a leg on the other side, they feel that they are insulting the elders by sitting that way. I was shocked by the business behavior. Uh, so stating that you, you say, uh, huh, tumari, uh, जब तुम्हारी पैर को दूसरी तरफ से रख के तुम बैठोगे तुम तुम्हारी ससुर को इंसल्ट कर रहे हो कि तो दीदी एटीट्यूड तो है ये बोल के बता बता रहा था कभी आई वाज एस्टोनिश्ड बाय हिज बिहेवियर एंड आल्सो ये ही नेवर ट्राई टू हेल्प मी इन एनी वे इन माय इन uh, communicating with his family in, uh, in uh, helping him helping bonding with his family in a time he tells me you don't have good relation with my family you never try to uh, mingle with us you always uh, be, be, being single away from my family never mingle with us this is the behavior he used to give me I was uh, like I uh, taken aback by his behavior. I couldn't understand what what happening in this. Right, right. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much for uh, sharing that, Amrita. Anybody else uh, wants to share their story? What red flags have they uh, identified? <clears throat> so don't worry guys you don't have to bother about that anybody is going to judge you or anything 
um, anything like a lack of communication, there is zero communication in the relationship, that is also a red flag, right? Uh, bitching about your previous partners and telling how bad they are is also a red flag. Um, uh, bitching about everybody else, that the whole world is stupid, bad, that is also a red flag, uh, right? And um, so many different kind of uh, red flags that we um, come up when um, uh, it comes to relationships. So any anyone that you can remember when it comes to what you have faced in your life, it can also be about friends uh, or family members or anybody. Yeah, can I share? Please, Harsha, go ahead. Yeah, so I had both the red flags, yours as well as Amrita's. Uh, but then Amrita's one, I was more on, uh, I was never allowed, or maybe I was distanced from his family. And we were in a new group from Yoni, me and Marvin. And this was my second marriage. And a uh, lot of uh, substance abuse. Now he is also into weed. He was already into drinking. He tried all the drugs. He is now in Goa. And uh, this time it was uh, hard because uh, somewhere I was ready for moving out and taking a break from the relationship. I don't know if it's going to be mended or not. But I feel for me right now, it's important for me to work on myself, you know, to make myself stronger as a person. Because I've, uh, as, as a person or as a woman or as a girl, I've always been dependent on, uh, you know, thinking of having a relationship and someone would take care of you'll always have a man a prince charming coming taking care of you and yes quite a few times he did take care of me and he did treat me well but many times just say treat well kia gaslighting karke or jealousy karke or controlling karke you know controlling dominating manipulative I learned a lot from him, <laughs> which I never knew most of it. And uh, somewhere on the other, wo shayad wo internal traits the, ke wo bahar hai because he did allow me to also play. I'm sure uh, because of his unconscious state, most of the time of drinking and all for years, it, uh, it was a two, two, eight years relationship. We are still in touch and... Uh, I respect him for whatever he is and he does respect me for whatever I am. No other option. But then kind of he was a friend and uh, because I left most of, my, most of my friends, I left most of the people who were in my life. But touched by God's grace, I never left my family. So my mother has always been by my side. Uh, she's she was uh, a bit worried about the society, but now she's not. So I'm at my family's place. I also have another house. But most people say that to me, I'm not comfortable staying alone. Then, you know, why force myself to live alone and go, you know, go through the pain? And because when I'm at my family, I feel safe and secure. Thoda. You know, I have a son, as I told you. So I'm I'm somewhere uh, gone through all these things, which uh, whichever must have been, you know going through the abuse as well uh, a blame as well uh, quite a few of uh, public insult a bit of it and it's okay he is just enjoying himself you know and it's okay no. not not he was never being a protector never being a provider never I felt secure so secure insecurity to sabse bada ek karan tha jo mujhe bahut andar se hila ke rakha jata hil jati thi you know it was very difficult but every time i would, would go through this na i would work on myself and luckily ye baat to mujhe bahut lamba time mila after our separation to work on myself and tab se main apne pe work karte hi ja rahi hu meditation karti hu 
एंड बहुत वक्त से मैं रोई भी नहीं हूँ एंड दैट इज समथिंग विच आई फील हैज यू नो मेड मी स्ट्रॉन्ग ऐसा नहीं है नहीं रोती हूँ रोती भी हूँ जब मुझे फील होता है तो बट उस तरह से नहीं जैसे मैं पहले रोती थी दूसरी चीज पे रो जाती हूँ वर्कड अ लॉट ऑन माई सेल्फ एंड दैट्स वाई टोल्ड यू ना आई फील आई एम सीकिंग बिकॉज ऑफ विच आई एम योर टूडे थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच thank you uh, thank you harsha actually i i agree to you know this point that you are saying that um, uh, the relationship which lacks safety where you know two partners don't uh, make each other feel safe or there is lack of trust there is lack of safety i guess that is uh, those are some very important you know red flags which we need to observe in the relationship um, of course both the partners could be coming from their own uh, wounds and traumas but the whole point is that when you're entering the relationship uh, right and uh, you don't feel safe with your partner you don't feel secure you don't feel uh, that you can trust them they can trust you then we can certainly imagine the kind of relationship uh, uh, which uh, we are going to build uh, on that kind of foundation so it's very uh, safety and trust um, are i guess you know one of the major major important factors and if those th- things because these are basics foundational level things if that is missing then yeah uh, it it can go in all different directions yeah thank you harsha for bringing that up uh, anybody else any anything uh, that you can share from your life or anything that you can remember that's also fine yeah one most important point financial instability right uh in uh, case of financial instability uh that gets a little um uh contextual in nature so that's uh, uh, in the first instance not a, a red flag per se but uh, uh uh contextually if somebody has promised you something or uh, you ha- you have been told something that this is the situation this is what the person does and they earn and this is what they do and that case is uh, that doesn't come out as something which is right because you took the decision take uh, you know considering that and that if that's not right then yes that we can consider a red flag because there is mismatch between you know what is promised what is being said what is and what is being hidden so there are a lot of hidden elements in the relationship and uh, if the um, start of the relationship is based on uh, lies then don't know what comes further yes. deepthi you you raised your hand you want to talk uh in case Thank you're you. talking deepthi yes we can hear you yes. yeah what were you saying no no we couldn't hear you in the beginning we can hear you now yeah uh, we just talked about lies so i want to share my own experience so i was married uh, through a matrimonial app and the uh, my husband my ex husband he actually lied to me about everything everything in the sense ki uh, i was lied to about his education about his business about every single damn thing the smallest to biggest things and uh, when i got to know obviously uh, we asked about a few things initially but we were lied to about everything and uh, somehow me and my family did not um, um, basically we ignored the red flags we were uh, made uh, we were given some excuses and uh, somehow me and my family did uh, trust everything that was told to us uh, all the excuses and after getting married when i got to know about the lies uh, i did accept everything uh, in the name of that i matlab i know him for uh, maybe one year before getting married to him so i uh, kind of accepted it as my fate that uh, uh, it's okay whatever lies for me i try to mend his ways but i lived with that person for uh, five years and uh, one and a half year of separation also but that man never changed apart from the lies he uh, he used to take drugs i was lied to about uh, his drugs addiction also about alcohol habits also everything and uh, we uh, just uh, talked about the bitching thing he and his mother used to talk about every person like uh, like they are perfect and every other person in the whole world is uh, uh, 
like uh, fake and everything so all these kind of things were uh, and plus the uh, we were talking about uh, cutting off uh, from people his uh, uh, family lived nearby only in the same city but i was not uh, allowed to meet them like even despite being in the same city i was not allowed to meet his his side of the family and uh, for my own family also i was not uh, very much allowed to talk to them matlab he used to talk to his own family a lot and when it came to me talking to my family actually i was working so i personally didn't have much time to give otherwise also when i used to talk he used to be very uh, interfering what are you telling you need not tell such things actually i didn't even share much on my own part also but he al- already always had a problem with me sharing anything with my family and uh, uh, regarding your uh, uh, financial abuse yes there was financial abuse also like uh, uh, there uh, he used to uh, take money from me on some pretext or the other and i as a wife i did uh, give him money like he used to tell me i need it for my business and all stuff and later i used to get to know uh, i got to know that he spent all that money on casino on uh, uh, drugs and everything so there was abuse at so many levels there were so many red flags and uh, i like a stupid ignored everything and when i uh, tried to reconnect the dots uh, it was all obvious from the beginning but somehow i ignored everything thank you thank you uh, sharing that uh, deepthi i mean i can actually resonate to you know almost um, uh, everything that you said uh, and um, uh, the thing is that uh, yes you know in the early warnings also we we see, keep seeing the these inconsistencies coming up where the person is you know saying one thing doing another thing thinking something else only uh, and we keep getting manipulated and we keep getting you know believing these inconsistencies and we never try to even check upon those things or see if uh, you know any of these things which one of these is right what he's saying or what he's doing or you don't do that right and then yeah we we see so many things so many um, you know toxicity happening at so many different levels yeah thank you thank you so much uh, deepthi that was really valuable uh now aditi you are next uh, you'll have to unmute aditi in case you're talking then uh, it's not from our side maybe try logging out and log back in uh, it might work so yeah so we can go to deepak in the meantime yeah yes deepak over to you uh, yeah thank you uh, actually uh, i have a question uh, which uh, i am trying to resolve it uh, from my experience currently uh, i am in a relationship uh, and uh, it's almost like a, for last 5 years we are uh, together and uh, in the beginning when i proposed uh, we agreed to the point that as per the um, universe uh, decision will go ahead let us start with friendship and if it turns out to be uh, is a uh, like a long term uh, spouse uh, husband relationship then we'll continue with that like we'll get married and all and um, then uh, basically that particular decision came up as a um, part of uh, her personal uh, uh, discrepancies and turbulences from her life and from her family and being the um, family head she was the only person who is who is supposed to resolve all these issues and i was helping her in that way and in the at that time only i have proposed her that if uh, that means i would like to get married with her and all after 2 to 3 years down the line when it was realized that uh, the problems will remain over there as it is and uh, but their intensity has been uh, drastically uh, neutralized so i started pursuing that uh, proposition 
then she turned out saying that uh, i am thinking you as my close friend and not uh, the other way around and uh, i always uh, thought of that thing and uh, i am not interested to get married anyway that means not with me but uh, her decision was that she she doesn't want to get married to anybody she is not intended to get married and uh, since then for last two two and a half years we are just struggling in our relationship and uh, i was uh, still under impression is uh, that uh, she is neutral and uh, she really doesn't want to get married but uh, whatever um, body language and our whatever the way we interact with each other and uh, come in uh, we spend time with each other that all indicates that uh, basically it's uh, everything is there except that uh, acceptance of our uh, relationship in true way and uh, that is the point where i am getting confused and that's why i am not able to understand and uh, identify the uh, red flag over here in my relationship right right and did you uh, talk to her about uh, you know uh, what communication you guys had in the beginning that uh, you know we will see where the relationship goes i mean it was open ended in the beginning so did you talk to her about that yeah many a times i talked to her about that and uh, incidentally this five years is a very long period and uh, we already had uh, in number of meetings with uh, families uh let me explain that uh, we both are uh, almost like uh, uh, at the age of senior citizen level i am 58 59 she is 51 so it's not like that we are in mid age or in young age of that part but uh, considering the status of uh, overall uh, situations and uh, the relationships which we are carrying out uh, it was always like uh, it was the, then it's the entire uh, Uh, fam- family members and everybody was thinking that it is just a fa- matter of time when they are go- coming and they are declaring that okay we are getting married on so and so date so that way we are close to each other and uh, now she says that uh, i am always uh, i always think that you are my close friend and uh, i never uh, saw you in that nature i never wanted to get married neither with you nor with anybody else Okay. Okay. And is there anything that she's she is scared of? I mean, has she shared with you any of her fears or insecurities when it comes to you know committing in the relationship? Uh, scaring in the sense she mentioned that always she always uh, mentions that uh, she has observed uh, uh, marriages uh, around her. Like uh, her brother is also uh, a married person and. he is facing a lot many problems in his uh, married life so is the situation with her elder sister and uh, in both the cases the situation is that uh, as far as her elder sister is concerned uh, she is again uh, the family head uh, her husband is uh, suffering from colitis and that's why for last 10 years he is not working he is not earning anything so the entire family responsibility lies on her sister's shoulder and as far as his her brother is concerned uh, here the case is vice versa that uh, for some reason or the other uh, her brother is not at all working not at all earning and uh, his wife is earning as a school teacher and she is trying to pull the overall uh, family responsibilities and all this thing and she holding all this uh, family responsibility so in all uh, her impression about all these things is that uh, whenever you are into the married life you have to uh, compromise and sacrifice which anyway she is doing to uh, sustain with her uh, family because she is having the responsibility of her uh, elder mother also with her um, with her and since the brother is also staying with her indirectly the family responsibility of uh, brother's family is also on her shoulder right right so she probably feels that if she gets married it would be uh, even more responsibility for her mm, actually i have already committed her and explained her the my plans and my uh, road map about uh, the future of our uh, uh, married life wherein i am uh, 
uh, that means I have explained her that uh, I am uh, willing to take the entire responsibility of her mother also along with uh, whenever we get married. And not only that, uh, since I have good rapport with uh, her brother, I have plans of uh, building certain business which uh, he is willing to start up with. And uh, I assured her. Uh, him as well as uh, her that uh, I will help the that guy out to uh, build up his business along with my contacts and connections. So whatever problem uh, he's, her brother is facing that uh, he is not earning and uh, his family being run by his wife, that uh, uh, problem I told that uh, if he starts working out as per the this activity, he will be self-sufficient and uh, he will start uh, uh, owning the family responsibilities of his own family. Yeah, yeah. So you are also ready to solve, uh, you know, these issues. So now yeah. uh, the ball actually comes to your court that um, you uh, get the clarity uh, that what kind of a relationship that you want to have in your life, right? And um, you have tried the best of everything that you can to you know make the relationship work and if it is still not working then there comes a point you know where you need to uh, set the foot down and uh, just clearly explain that uh, you know uh, this is uh, what i feel and yeah actually uh, hardly 8 to 10 days before that means uh, today sunday uh, la last saturday we had this type of discussion and i put uh, i put my foot down and uh, i actually gave her some examples like in last five years whatever happened and uh, as she was saying that uh, she thinks that i am her uh, close friend and all i thought i told her that say there might be three four other uh, jains who to whom he she thinks that they are also her close friends and then I uh, segregated the experiences that A, B, C, D, these are the four incidences, five incidences that whether you did the same thing with those guys also, the way you did it with me. Like whether whenever some, you face any problem, whether the same problem was uh, carried out to any one of them, the way you were uh, behaving with me, doesn't it explain that uh, it is something beyond normal uh, close friend and all, all things. And then she bursted into cry. She was crying almost for 30 to 45 minutes. And I was literally stunned because I was not aware of uh, how to handle this situation because there was no reason which was explained that why she is crying. And that is the point where I'm uh, in confusion that how to uh, draw that particular small thin line between uh, close friendship and uh, relationship hmm. Hmm. so being in a confused state for too long and uh, you know not, not getting a clear answer so a lot of time in relationship it happens that you know so i'm going to be very uh, blunt and honest um, people be in the relationship but also not be in the relationship completely right so we hear it so many times when uh, you know uh, guys have this complaint that I have been friend zoned and I am getting mixed signals from this uh, lady or girl that uh, she wants it. But yet when it comes to, uh, you know, getting into the relationship, taking a decision, making it uh, uh, work out like an actual relationship, they just run away. So that is true that she might be coming from her own, uh, you know, fears, insecurities and traumas. But uh, giving, uh, keeping somebody hanging like a pendulum in itself is, you know, a red flag. Yeah. So, okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Deepak. So, this is just uh, what I felt from your situation. Cool. Cool. Yes. So now let's move to Aditi. Yes, your hand is up. Uh, yes, Anamika. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, yes, Aditi. I okay, can hear you. I can hear you. Sorry. Um, yeah, so the last time, I think uh, there was a fall from my side. Um, 
so uh, the common red flags that I had seen uh, with my ex-husband were, um, of course, lying is a big part of it. Uh, but then there was also avoiding uh, planning or avoiding going out together or not to be seen uh, together on social media particularly. So uh, and there were like really lame uh, excuses for the same. Uh, but, you know, telling like, like, for example, if you're married, you would like to celebrate festivals together or birthdays together. Uh, but when it uh, came to celebrations, it was like, oh, I don't have money uh, to celebrate or buy you a gift. So we'll just celebrate with a, a 50 rupees pastry. Or I hope you understand uh, my job is unstable, which was again a lie. So there were like only words uh, there were that did not or translate into actions. Uh, very, very poor communication. For example, keeping the phone switched off for hours together, I would say like for days uh, together, um, especially when it uh, came to sharing uh, things or, you know, uh, avoiding fights or just communicating, Ki, look, I'm not uh, OK. You know, just saying that, like he would avoid uh, the communication totally. Uh, I think all of this really, I mean, I came to know later on ki all of this behavior really stemmed from a major childhood trauma that he had and which he did not even share with his family. And he kind of opened up to me right before the divorce happened. So by that time, I was like, if he had shared this before, you know, there wouldn't have been a marriage, there wouldn't have been a divorce and we would have avoided getting together uh, in total. But obviously, uh, because of the trauma, he could not share. Avoidance was like a major uh, red flag for me. And uh, coming to uh, the in-laws, they were pretty uh, toxic. But the most important red flag, I think it is not just a red flag is not just with a partner. It is also with the partner's families, uh, not respecting uh, someone's boundaries. Uh, I thought like was a major uh, red flag. Uh, for example, like I just, there were multiple instances, but the major instance where I actually understood that these people are not going to respect me whatsoever uh, was that my dad passed away uh, suddenly. And I think I was still grieving uh, his death, which was a major shock for my entire family. And uh, my mother in law says, we have to celebrate Sankranti festival. And I was like taken aback by her decision. She's like, I'm going to call 50 or 100 people uh, and we are going to sit and celebrate. You're going to dress up. And I was not over the uh, grief period yet. I couldn't even understand like the whole process and I became totally numb. So by the time the festival happened, you know, I was dressed up like nice sari, nice jewelry. And I was just made to, I was smiling and laughing on the other side, but um, Internally, I was just breaking down. I mean, I had swollen eyes. Uh, I would just like, okay, people are coming, they're talking, I'm serving them food, I'm giving them gifts and all of this stuff. But I, I think that was the time where I really understood that uh, these people are not meant for me. I think my nervous system kind of completely crashed uh, at that point of time. And um, lastly, not... Uh, opening up about intimacy issues. Uh, that was also a major a red flag. And uh, sharing the things that I personally shared with my husband to his family, for example, there are a lot of things that need to be kept between a husband and wife, but that didn't happen. Um, I would share something really personal and that would like totally go uh, to his immediate family, his sisters, his father, his mother, and everybody would sit and then judge me. Uh, over that simple uh, fact, which was, I mean, the fights would happen over like really silly issues, uh, I thought. Um, but um, I think someone was just saying, Ki, I'm so stupid in believing them and all of this. Uh, but I kind of disagree with that statement uh, for simple reason being uh, we had we have a good heart. We have a clean heart. We are authentic uh, by nature. And I think uh, being vulnerable and uh, being open about ourselves and just trusting people, thinking that because we are good people, they're also be good people. I think um, 
I don't want to blame myself for this. Yes, I trusted somebody who wronged me, uh, but I learned my lessons and I'm going to uh, not repeat the same patterns. I think that's how I'm going to grow. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's it, Anamika, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, really, really uh, valuable, Aditi, because I agree. Uh, and I have, uh, when you're saying this, you know, that when um, we are good and when we think that, you know, the world is a safe place, nice place. Yeah. Uh, we, we also tend to, you know, see the good in other people. Yes. Right. But uh, uh, <laughs> the only day we learn our lessons is that uh, we yeah. come to realize that, a point, uh, uh, that there is a point where there is good and bad both. And yep. It's not about judging yeah. that, uh, you know, why there is uh, bad. It's just there because they both coexist together. Mm -hmm. So it's simply about uh, seeing things as they are. And uh, I too have, you know, like you learned these lessons only after going through all of these. Things. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, many things we like today we are doing a discussion. Maybe uh, some of the people who are listening to you can get some points. Maybe can uh, it's actually happening to them and they can relate to it. Uh, so some of these things we can learn through others' experiences, stories. We can become more aware and mindful. Yep. But it's even okay that we have gone through it. What is more important is that how much we have learned from it and uh, grown from it. Yeah, there is just one thing, Anamika, that I would like to say. I, I hope that people resonate with this. Um, yeah. During all of this traumatic period, during all of this turmoil, I had my gut feeling was always that you know this person is using me this person or these people are not respecting my boundaries or you know what maybe uh, i should not trust them so much this gut feeling was always there and i you know for just looking thinking that they're good people like the worst part i mean where i'm really mad at myself is not having the trust or faith in myself i think i trusted them more than i trusted myself so, uh, you know, like I had this gut feeling, but, you know, I would like counter it by saying, oh, Aditi, you're just overthinking. Oh, you know what? This is just your anxiety. You know what? Calm down. You should trust these people. Yeah. Like, that's that's really my biggest lesson. Key. When I know that something is off, my nervous system would totally tell me that uh, this, is, this is off. But then now I have learned that is like the major uh, lesson that I've learned to uh, not ignore my gut feelings and you know, my self-esteem has really grown from that period. But right now, I'm really trusting my gut more than anybody else in the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I cannot agree more with you on this, uh, Aditi, that we need to, uh, you know, um, see things for what they are. And when our gut uh, is giving us, us hunches, then we also need to trust it, right? And uh, okay, once we ignore it, twice we ignore it. But if it is happening over and over and over again, and you know, everything that is surrounding us is given, uh, giving us signals that look here, look here, look here. And yet, if we keep ignore it, then uh, you know, then we have really not learned the lesson. Then we learn it when we go through all of those yeah. things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Aditi. Cool, cool. That was really nice. Now, anybody else would like to share anything? And then we'll move to, uh, you know, seeing a few pointers why we overlook these red flags. Yes, Siti, go ahead. Yeah, and I make them hello. Uh, I just want to add a few points to what Aditi just said. I mean, I can resonate so much with what you said, Aditi. I mean, my, uh, I'm like soon to be going to be separated from my spouse and all the red flags which you pointed out, I have faced almost all of these with him. And uh, the last statement which you said that you did not trust your gut feeling. So this is... Uh, but I remember the first day when my when our marriage was going to be finalized and I was made to sit with him and talk. Jessica arranged marriage in the and uh, I was talking to him and there was this this intuition inside me which told me that uh, 
you know this guy this person is not meant for me and this is what i went and told to my mom but uh, due to my own you know conditioning and childhood uh, drama and everything i could not take a stand for myself and what followed was a complete you know messed up uh, messed up relationship in which uh, the only person in the whole relationship was my spouse i was nowhere in the whole relationship for right? 12 to 13 years and uh, uh, one more recent example what i would like to share is the i have talked about this to sachin and namika just two days back we uh, we separated some one and a half years ago and uh, from then onwards he never made he never tried to make up contact or you know they tried to make an effort to see to see our son who is 5 years old and just two days back he came with this you know so called honest and sincere request that he wants to be in his in his son's life and uh, as aditi said that we we have this innate goodness in ourselves that we want to believe what the other person is saying and the same thing happened with me i i decided to trust him that he is being honest and he is being coming from a space of honesty and that i would give him that chance but uh, today itself i came to know about uh, an incident from my mother that uh, he was uh, i won't go into the incident in too much detail but uh, what i felt was that he was just trying to you know salvage his position in the society where right? few common relatives were talking about how he is not being a responsible person or responsible father and so and so and this made him uh, you know kind of approach me so his approaching me was not coming from a place of love or honesty for his son rather i felt that uh, this uh, his uh, approach was coming from a place of uh, to do something for uh, to do something entirely for his own reputation and uh, if i was a previous i mean if i was a previous version of myself i would have overlooked this but now i have uh, uh, i have decided to you know trust more into my own gut feelings and uh, i would take a pause and uh, i would like to would like to revise the you know the earlier decision which i took that whether i should let him into my son's life or not because it has taken taken me a lot of time and courage to finally separate my life from him so now just uh, because he wants to be there i am not going to expose myself or my son to the same cycle which i was um, which i was you know caught up in for almost two years so yeah this is what i mean. thank you yeah thank you thank you so much for sharing that cp yeah yeah i mean <laughs> we talked about it and i'm happy to hear that you know you are able to uh, just you know gauge these things beforehand so that's great great yes i'm like so relieved like but i don't have any confusion ki mai matlab like जैसे होता है ना फिफ्टी फिफ्टी में की करूँ या ना करूँ आई डोंट हैव दैट कंफ्यूज एन मोर आई एम लाइक फॉर्म कि नहीं अभी आई हैव टू टेक अ पास एंड आई हैव टू मेक अ बाउंड्री कि वेदर आई वांट टू लेट दैट पर्सन इनसाइड आर लाइफ्स और नॉट सो या आई एम हैप्पी ऑन दैट बिकॉज अर्लियर आई कूडन यू नो स्टैंड फॉर माई सेल्फ आई कूडन से नहीं कि माई पेरेंट्स एंड एक्चुअली आई वॉन्ट इट but this time i want to take a stand for both myself and my son both my you know proceed on this on this journey of letting him again back into our house so that is a very profound i think yeah. it is it is yeah thank you thank you so much for sharing that cp so, yeah yeah so yes when Uh, these things come into our awareness when we learn to take a pause and when uh, the whole point is you know how much we are ready to see things as they are not through our own filters 
So like Aditi was talking, CP was talking, and you know, trust me, there would be many people here like this. Uh, filters, it's not about filters being that your filters are good, you think that the whole world is good, or your filters are bad, that you think the whole world is bad. No, filters are filters, right? So even if you are uh, um, a person who thinks good about yourself, good about other people, but if we keep wearing our filters, you know, so, so tons of things, tons of things, everything gets filtered into it and uh, we start seeing things which are toxic and harmful also as, you know, things that can be changed, things that can, uh, maybe they're not there and we start questioning ourselves that, uh, you know, maybe maybe uh, I am not trusting enough or maybe I'm questioning this too much. Uh, right, because we have this habit of thinking that no, I am a good person, so I don't judge people. I don't this. So it's not about judging other people. Uh, we all have that, you know, love. We can have that compassion. We can have that uh, understanding, and yet that doesn't mean that we need to give in to the situations. Right, where it is a yes, it is a yes. Where it is a no, it is a no. Right. Because giving into all of these things um, uh, actually does no good. It does uh, harm to a greater circle, right? Greater number of people. So now um, let's also talk a little bit about why, what are the reasons uh, because of which we, uh, you know, possibly give into these red flags. We oversee them, ignore them and all of these things so the first reason being that you know sometimes we give ourselves an excuse ki, um, you know akele rehne se to better hai, that uh, we at least have somebody right so um, rather than being lonely being left alone and fir uske baad koi ye milega, nahi milega, koi, whether i'll find the right partner or not right or yeah fir, fir se mehnat karni padegi. You know, I'll again have to look for another person or uh, what it, it's been one year, two years. What are my friends going to think about it? What, uh, you know, kisi kai logo ki shadi fix ho jati and this, they say that what my family is going to think about it. Um, and we continue to think about these things and we say that, uh, you know, rehne de pe, this, these things will change. These things will get better over a period of time. Right. And the truth is that they don't. So people don't change until they themselves want to change, right? And if the other person shows no such uh, attributes of uh, becoming a better person, then nothing is going to change. That all, all the red flags are going to be there, only they're going to come up in the form of uh, situations. Now, other than feeling lonely and being uh, alone, another pattern which comes up into the picture is the rescuer pattern. Right. So a lot of us have, you know, had really difficult childhood when we have seen that when we needed somebody, when we wanted somebody. Right. We never had anybody. So we feel so bad about ourselves that we think that, you know, nobody was there with them. So, you know, even if this person has uh, is showing these traits, is doing all of these things, I will be the savior. I will be the rescuer and I will take them out of this thing, right? I will help them heal. I will have help them transform themselves. So uh, we ourselves play a role in this in a way where um, uh, we are not getting into a relationship, but actually we are getting into a project, a project of helping somebody else grow into an adult. Hmm. So this rescuer pattern, although sounds very... Uh, you know, theoretical when I'm talking, but this is very common, very, very common, right? Uh, now, the third thing is that uh, we think that it's going to change, it's going to work out some way. So we keep having that false hope that something magical would happen and this person will change, right? Just because we don't want to face that... Uh, uh, I have given so much time in the relationship and uh, uh, now I'm having that attachment to, uh, you know, uh, to this person. 
um and i don't want to leave it so we think that we have invested so much we have done so much in the relationship that uh, we don't want to see the truth for uh, what it is we keep living in that hope because we keep believing the false promises that is being made by uh, you know people and uh, as humans naturally our tendency is to make the relationship work because everybody in the society te- tells us all the time that the health of the relationship is about the longer it goes on so the kind of couples that we admire in the society are couples who have been together for 60 70 80 years they are 100 years old together and we celebrate it so much and that's um, okay but uh, the thing is that nobody looks into this thing that whether they have actually lived those 70 75 years happily or they even are they even aware of what happiness actually is right so we just continue to judge the relationship based on the longevity and everybody tells us that you know you cannot give up you cannot give up of course you shouldn't give up right but um, uh after seeing these signs and everything it's not actually about giving up it's actually about getting out of something which is not meant for you so that is good for you that is good for the other person so it's an overall good we don't know about the other person but certainly you right so yeah yeah so these are some of the base uh, um, you know common things that i have observed uh, why people keep hanging on to the relationship it usually comes from our own state of uh, worthiness so uh the more uh, lower our self worth the more is our need to prove our self worth based on the relationships that we have on on the success of how long we can stretch it for how long we can you know keep it going on how how much change we are able to bring bring in uh the other person's life right so these are some common reasons i could observe so anybody wants to share anything in this regard which of these pointers could you relate to uh, also akarma anything you would like to add to this um, no i think you have covered it or uh, this this point is um is very important is that one of the biggest red flags that we often see is this hope and um, and as uh, rabika said that it, it's not that we don't uh, like this word hope uh, it's a very beautiful word it's a very good word uh, but often it's not hope that people actually go by they call it hope uh, but if you listen to the story if you listen to what they're saying then you will often find that it's more of a delusion than hope um it's more of uh, you know expecting mango from an lemon tree so that is very important to distinguish and that we continue to see that people fail to observe they just fail to see the reality and uh, and the other person continues to show you the reality and yet we just live in that hope that some day things will change we have even come across people who have got married to another person even the red flags were right in front of them it's not even that they didn't see it they saw it and they recognized it and yet they went ahead uh, thinking that things will change and they didn't and, and now instead of taking ownership and responsibility they are feeling victimized about it that um, it didn't turn out to be the way they were hoping so this is not only confusing for the other person because while the other person has always been making it very clear that this is how things are uh, we continue to overlook that and hope that one day this person will change and when they are not changing then we are feeling the, that we are we are getting victimized uh, nothing more ridiculous can be than this so this is what we call being in delusion so a very very important thing to to do that is to put aside your expectations um, and by expectations i do, i don't mean don't have expectations obviously uh, as human beings we cannot live without expectations i'm saying that having expectations is fine 
but in order to evaluate the situation just put the evaluation uh, the expectations on side for a minute and see that is this person even capable of meeting those expectations so nothing wrong in expecting everybody should expect so that at the end of the day we marry someone we go in a relationship because we want to create a harmonious intimate happy relationship uh, if we will if we don't uh, want to have any expectations from the other person then why even get married why even get in that kind of relationship then two people are living separately and continue to live separately so we go in these relationships we we marry someone because we expect this so nothing wrong with that uh, what is wrong is not seeing the reality that are you expecting from the right person are they capable of giving you and uh, have you clarified it sometimes people are telling you directly but you don't want to see it because you you probably see something more in them than they, that they are not seeing and this is what we call a project maybe you are right that uh, the other person may have more capabilities and one day they will realize it but they're not they're not realizing it so um, this becomes a project for for us and we need to look at that what is it inside me that is making me so attracted to this project that why why am i spending time on this kind of thing uh, whereas when i had a chance that i could have uh, Uh, i could have uh, you know spend that time and energy uh, on a better finding a better relationship and all that so uh, hoping is good uh, everything expecting is good nothing wrong in hoping nothing wrong in expecting all good uh, but are you applying wrong concepts wrong place to the wrong person uh, that itself is a red flag for you to evaluate we even uh, I've seen a situation where uh, uh, a couple got married, and uh, uh, and, uh, and and the wife uh, felt that um, you know if uh, after marriage we are only uh, all uh, we we are anyway going to move to uh, abroad, so she could see that she was not going to get along with the um, with the in-laws, and uh, and there was no. Uh, it was a arranged marriage anyway so it's not that they were madly in love or anything like that. it was an arranged marriage and she could very well see that uh, she was not going to get along with the in-laws but her uh, expectation or her assumption was that it doesn't matter i don't have to see them we are going to move to abroad and then guess what after marriage they didn't move to abroad and and the, the whole situation got totally fucked up for 10 years when uh, they couldn't uh move to abroad and now you know even they are married they are not legally separated or divorced but they are living in two cities in two different uh, houses uh only because of this hope when the when the situation was right in front and i was there it was clearly there uh, and it was just that that we will move and that too was never clear it, it was only an assumption she didn't even clarify that is it going to be sure shot or not so it was just an assumption that we would move and then they didn't so so these simple things that we go by with this hope and this thing and now uh, she feels badly victimized betrayed by she even feels that he betrayed her uh, by by not doing this so you can imagine that how much uh, toxicity we could end up creating for ourselves uh, by assuming so much about the other person not clarifying and uh, forget about not able. so people who fall into a problem because they were not able to recognize um a, a, a red flag is one thing okay, that we can also consider it as an innocent mistake but when you see it and ignoring it that's a blunder that's not even a mistake so it's very important to see things as a clarify uh, communicate and when you are getting the answer clearly then do not assume differently so i was hearing what deepak was talking about 
um, and and i'm feeling uh, that you know this situation has been very clear in front of him five years so it has been very clear and yet uh, unable to uh, take the stand uh, why because we invest so much we invest so much in four years relationship five years relationship we don't want to lose it so that's the thing uh, and and i keep giving this example i've given this example to um, so many people and i've never got any different answer so i ask them that let's say you open a shop and uh, and and every month you are losing 1 lakh rupees no matter what you do no matter how what whatever you do you you end up losing 1 lakh rupees every month how long are you going to keep doing that just because it was your uh, baby you wanted to start this business so much in, and all that the commitment was there and everything uh, yet how many how many months how many years are you going to keep putting in money and you know that um, no matter what you are going to lose one lakh rupees every month it's just going out of your pocket how long are you going to feed this some some day you will have to decide to cut the losses and and i never got uh, an answer from anybody to say yes yes i won't do it that obviously tolerance level will be different some might close it up in 6 months some might close it in one year some might close it in two years but at the end you are very clear that you have to cut your losses because this is the reality yet we don't do that because we feel that we have invested emotionally so much um, you have invested emotionally so much in this Uh, but imagine how much more emotionally you are going to get uh, invest if you go ahead with uh, the person who is not fully into it. So how much more suffering and how much more toxicity is going to get created by actually forcing it to happen? If by while it's not happening, you are suffering so much. Imagine if it would happen. If the other person is not into it, then they are not into it. So. these are some of the red flags which we continue to overlook and uh, we continue to force and not make that decision that we have to and why we are not able to make that decision uh, that we have to when, when it is very clear uh, simple answer that we have given all the time is insecure attachment style our own insecurities insecure attachment styles that we have been carrying which we have not looked into um, and we haven't resolved them they keep us entangled they keep us away from taking the decision that we want to take so until and unless we are ready to look at our own insecurities and uh, and fix this insecure attachment style uh, no good solution is going to come with with the disease inside your body any decision you are going to take it's going to be unhealthy so uh, i don't i'm i'm not saying that uh, by uh, by doing this by looking at your insecure attachment styles you uh, you only have to uh, cut out the relationship you know many people have been able to uh, resolve also but you have to come to a healthy state first you have to come to a state where you are not taking decisions from desperation until you keep coming from a state of desperation you cannot put in um, healthy decision so only when you are in a healthy state in a secure attachment style when the desperation is gone then you become capable of working something out that's all i wanted to say anybody has anything to say on this yes yes akarma uh, akarma i'm sorry i have i'm yes, pronouncing a name wrong so yes yes very true we are with the delusion world i was totally into it you know let things happen let time to things will change and we hope hope use karta na word jaise aapne bola we are always in that delusion 
that things will happen and things will change but it doesn't change eight years of relationship i did not change he did not change and i was on my stand that i will not change for anyone because i knew i was changing already i i was i had done everything possible to be in the relationship you know financially emotionally physically mentally in all the ways i did everything possible to be in the relationship and then his uh, he had a lot of his own childhood traumas physical uh, what do you say uh, physical abuse what he had gone through with his family and uh, sexual abuse what he had gone through and a uh, lot of other things which he never wanted to heal and even never wanted to see on it okay and i today is the time i'm even understanding all these things how much it must have hurt and you know his abandonness towards me and uh, the way he would treat and he would run away from the relationship and never wanted but he wanted everything but not to come back so uh, we had come we had even the marriage and you know in 2019 but then now recently when there was a big fight he just totally denied everything on the marriage of course as i told he is into drugs he is into alcohol he is into all these you know things what he has been doing and you know creating in his life and continuously wants to do it and i'm like okay fine you live your life and uh, if you have the right to live your life i of course have mine so and i didn't wanted my kid to be in that situation so that was the decision when we we had this fight and we he told that no i don't want this relationship but i told him of course uh, you can take a decision i will take it mine and i moved out and i am somewhere more happy being out of it and of course had a lot of self analyzing and self understanding of what i am i compromise a lot you know i settled for lesser than what i just for and what i should have got or what i should have been into i settled for lesser thinking that this is this is it you know with pressure of the society with pressure of the family with the pressure of peers friends everything as it was my second marriage so never wanted it to break but then it had to end somewhere it had to stop somewhere so yes that is something which i totally agree delusion of everything will change things will happen better it never does thank you very much uh, for allowing me to speak thank you thanks harsha yes thanks thanks for uh, sharing that and it always helps uh, when someone shares an example based on what we say because it reinforces um uh, the w- what we are talking about from from an experience point of view so mm-hmm. that is good uh great uh embrin your hand is up if you want to say something uh yes uh, karma i wanted to say that what about when two individuals who are married and both are right in their own ways like this is what i am facing like i am right in my viewpoint and my husband is right in his way of thinking i don't say that he is wrong but the problem is that uh, i don't think like he thinks and i don't want to accept what he wants to put on across me no he has been uh, born and brought up in a different environment altogether with different types of teaching which i haven't been exposed to and i haven't been brought up like that so he expecting me to adopt his lifestyle his thinking his way of life his religious thoughts you know this a uh, lots of conflicts goes on between us due to this uh so i mean i don't say he is wrong he is right because a uh, few things yeah i do agree but i don't take that because uh, okay you do what you like you you uh, carry on the way you have you have been you know brought up but you believe your beliefs okay but don't try to um, uh, you know make me change my beliefs and uh, make me um, believe in what you believe in he keeps like exposing uh, sorry uh, he keeps like uh, he goes on you know like uh, pressurizing me to accept it and do it the way he wants to you now the beliefs and whenever i am like uh, whenever we are having confidence when it comes like i become too much 
irritated with his thinking i'm like uh, see i don't uh, interrupt with your things you don't interrupt into my stuff you know these are the ways i have been brought up i these are the ways i have been doing i have been living i want to do it i i'm happy doing this what you do i cannot act, adopt that i am not happy doing it i'm sad so <laughs> these this is this is what it you know hampers me a lot and then um then he brings about things like uh, you know when nothing works when he's unable to control me you know when i'm like getting on uh, fighting with him on this then he brings about things like religious stuff you know so you should uh, f- uh, 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 you know you, uh, religious things you should see what is there what is not there you know uh, i have been married to you so uh, i thought you are going to be like this like this, but it's not like you thought i already told him what i am i already told him before marriage that see this is this is what i have been brought up to this is the way i dress up this is the way i speak this is my mentality does it match with you exactly, actually that's what i'm saying that that when the other person knows about this and this will hope that things will change then it not only uh, creates pressure on them but it also creates pressure on the other person because they never committed that they will change if he tells me that okay i understand that you can uh, that you were living a different type of life before marriage but after marriage you should at least learn these things you know which is lacking in you you should also uh, uh, adopt those things which you think uh, is right from my family or from me you know why why you are not uh, learning it now this is no excuse that you haven't been taught these things or you haven't you don't even believe on in all these stuffs now you can do it so that is what he tells and tries to impose on me yeah yeah so this um, yes one, one thing is um, is that that um, relationship problem doesn't matter what kind of problems we are talking about in general any relationship problem is a responsibility of both sides kisi ka kisi ki galti zyada ya kam ho sakti hai koi koi zyada galat aur koi kam galat aise percentage mein ho sakta hai but koi bhi relationship problem couple ke beech mein 100% ek tarfa nahi hoti hai that is the that is the thing ha matlab kuch kuch uh, cheeze chhod ke uh, jaise for example if somebody is cheating and all that so तो कुछ कुछ चीजें हम एक्सेप्शनल केसेस में ले सकते हैं कि दैट इज द केस बट उस केस में भी कई बार ग्रे एरिया होता है कि समवन एंड्स अप चीटिंग देन देयर कुड बी अ रिलेशनशिप प्रॉब्लम बिटवीन टू पीपल बिकॉज ऑफ व्हिच द पर्सन कुड एंड अप डूइंग दैट बट एन इफ देयर आर केसेस इन व्हिच कपल इज फाइंड नो प्रॉब्लम एंड येट जस्ट द हस्बैंड और वाइफ दे आर जस्ट यूज्ड टू um having um you know multiple relationships so but so aadat padi hui hai ya unka waisa bone vaisi hai so they end up doing that kind of thing so ignoring those kind of uh, exceptional cases any relationship problem if that has to be solved has to be solved by both people it is not something that can be solved by just one person so uh, understanding that maybe he had this expectation he didn't make it clear and all that or or uh, he never he assumed that you would do this chalo ab chalo wo ho gaya wo to mistake ab to ab to ho gayi na shaadi ab wo ho gaya to ab it is uh, about you know finding a middle ground somewhere to have have a have a conversation rather than imposing ki i expected this or aisa hi hona chahiye tha aur nahi ho raha hai to putting a blame on the other person ki aisa kyun ho raha hai तो वो टॉक्सिक हो जाता है तो मेच्योर कपल्स ट्राई टू फिगर आउट अ कॉमन ग्राउंड नाउ कि अब चलो अब तो हो गया अब तो अब तो हाथी निकल गया तो अब अब उस चीज को जाके अंडू तो नहीं कर सकते है ना जो बातें शादी से पहले होनी चाहिए थी वो नहीं हुई तो अब वी यू कैनॉट कीप गोइंग बैक टू दैट पॉइंट एंड एंड डिस्कस ऑल दीज थिंग अब वो तो हो गया अब क्या अब यहाँ से आगे क्या यहाँ से आगे दोनों लोगों को मिल तो कोई कॉमन ग्राउंड निकालना पड़ेगा जो दोनों के लिए वर्क करेगा ना तो दैट इज द साइन ऑफ अ हेल्थी रिलेशनशिप क्योंकि प्रॉब्लम्स तो आती ही रहेंगी आज ये प्रॉब्लम है दस साल के बाद कोई और प्रॉब्लम आ जाएगी बीस साल के बाद कोई और प्रॉब्लम आ जाएगी सो इट्स नॉट दैट इवन इफ यू वुड हैव सॉर्टेड एवरीथिंग टॉक अबाउट एवरीथिंग लुक्ड एट ऑल रेड फ्लैग एंड एंड मैरिड अ परफेक्ट पर्सन एंड ऑल दैट तो आपकी लाइफ में आगे कोई प्रॉब्लम ही नहीं आएगी ऐसा तो कोई 
ऐसा तो कुछ है नहीं तो द हेल्दी साइन इज हाउ रेडी बोथ पीपल आर टू टेक ओनरशिप एंड फिगर अ कॉमन ग्राउंड फॉर दिस राधर देन ब्लेमिंग इच अदर फॉर दिस थिंग सो वो होना बहुत जरूरी है things go more worse when he tries to compare me with his sisters now what his sisters are doing with their husbands how can he expect me also to be like them i mean it's and then his mother also look at my mother how religious she is how good she is how nice she is i mean, i'm worse no then let me be on my own leave me alone if i am the worst person you have married you know it things like became that bad yeah even i experienced this before Yeah, so it became like it became so horrible that I was like, okay, just let me, leave me then. Let it be. You go your way, I go mine. I am the worst person. I'm not like your sister. I'm not like your mother. So uh, then, don't bother me. I want to be in peace. I want to uh, live a peaceful life. I married you for peace and happiness. And if if that is not being fulfilled, then I think better neither you are happy with me nor me. So what is the purpose ultimately, of being together? Yeah, ultimately, like. Um, as much as we it's not that we we support this kind of thing that we want people to separate and all that but um but, but as much as we have talked to people and as much as we have seen ultimately this is the unfortunate truth of situation if both of both people are not ready to resolve so wo baat nahi hi banti hai fir it's it's an inevitable truth sooner or later that split happens Uh, or or sometimes you know when the couple is younger and they have life ahead of them then they they can't they they, they think it is there is no point uh, living like this but when the couple is older 15 20 साल 30 साल लगा लिए हैं एक ही में so then they just feel ki you know ab kaun karega change and all that so they just they just create a situation jisme they just become okay with this so they start living separate life but maybe they will not officially separate for whatever reason bacche hai ya log kya samjhenge ya status hai ya whatever hai to uski wajah se log wo decision nahi lete hain to split uh, ek hi ghar mein reh ke do alag alag rooms mein they will start living two separate lives and husband is having his own life wife is having his own, own life and all that to wo chalta hai um, बट बट अगर उसको रिलेशनशिप के एंगल से देखा जाए तो वो तो डेड ही है ना इट्स इट्स नॉट दैट आपने ऑफिशियली डिवोर्स नहीं लिया है वो नहीं हुआ है तो उससे क्या फर्क पड़ता है इन द स्पिरिट ऑफ अ रिलेशनशिप ये रिलेशनशिप में होने के लिए तो किसी ने शादी नहीं की थी ना टू लिव लाइक दिस तो सो वो वो वही अल्टीमेटली वही डेस्टिनेशन है इफ टू टू पीपल आर नॉट रेडी टू टू स्प्लिट Uh, to to work it out, then uh, un- unfortunately that is where things head to. Uh, no matter mm-hmm. how much we don't want it, but वो ये बात है कि वो एक mentally we don't collect uh, connect with each other. That's what I have realized. Mentally we don't think alike. I mean. totally like opposites you know and when i want to do what i like doing or what i have been doing i'm made to feel guilty horrible as bad as possible just because i live a particular type of life you know so i'm made to feel really bad about myself so this is how i mean uh uh-huh. it has been happening since yeah, this long yeah yeah, yeah. and and it is it is unfortunately it is yeah. true uh, the the thing to the thing to look at in this whole scenario is that um, that although you are uh, sticking to your point that i prefer to live like this and all that but when the other person is making you feel this way then you are still getting triggered by that yes it may, right? it may, so, very difficult for me to be normal mm-hmm. when you are make made to ah. feel bad isn't exactly. it about yourself exactly. Exactly. I want to feel good, but you are constantly finding faults in my uh, thoughts, in my actions, in my way of ah. life. So, how am I supposed to feel good about with that person? I mean, no, 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 you are not. It's not that you are supposed to feel good about that person. It's not like that. Uh, it is about that the other person is showing you a mirror. यहाँ पे दो problems हैं. Understand this thing. यहाँ पे दो problems. और मैं ये बहुत ही 
generic way mein baat karo now i am not talking about any incidents now i am not talking about he said this she said that and all that i'm just talking from a generic point yahan pe do problems hai ek problem hai ki the couple is not able to work out the issue themselves so no matter what one person thinks they are right the other person thinks they are right and whatever the case is they are not come able to come to the middle ground so that is one problem second problem is any incident that happens that triggers us that upsets us and puts us in this situation is showing us a mirror so ye log hamari life mein aaye hain humko kuch wo dikhane ke liye wo wounds dikhane ke liye jo hum already carry kar rahe the apne andar so uh, now the question is ye to hamari zimmedari banti hai see pehla kaam hum akele nahi kar sakte pehla kaam to do logon ko milke karna padega usme aap kitna bhi chaah lo दूसरा पार्टिसिपेट ही नहीं कर रहा है अगर आपको बैडमिंटन खेलना है और आपके पास पार्टनर ही नहीं है तो आप नहीं खेल सकते ना सिंपल इज दैट तो आपको कितनी भी इंटरेस्ट हो बैडमिंटन खेलने की आप वो सामने वाला खेलना ही नहीं चाह रहा है तो इट डजेंट मैटर यू के नॉट प्ले बैडमिंटन सो एज सिंपल एज दैट बट आपको अगर बैडमिंटन खेलना नहीं आता है तो वो तो आप ही को सीखना पड़ेगा ना उसके लिए आपको दूसरे इंसान की जरूरत नहीं है ना आप जब बैडमिंटन खेलते हो और उसमें आपको ये समझ में आता है कि नहीं मैं तो शॉट ठीक से नहीं खेल पा रही या मैं ये नहीं कर पा रही वो नहीं कर पा रही तो जो स्किल्स की लैकिंग है वो तो आपको इंडिविजुअली खुद से ही जाके प्रैक्टिस करनी है ना तो उसमें दूसरे इंसान की गलती नहीं है ना कि अरे उसने ऐसा शॉर्ट मार दिया उसने वो शॉर्ट मार दिया वो ऐसे मारता तो मैं ठीक से खेल लेती वो ये करता तो मैं ठीक से खेल लेती तो वो तो इट इज शोइंग योर लैक ऑफ स्किल तो वो तो खुद को ही सॉल्व करना है ना कि दीज थिंग्स डेट आर ट्रिगरिंग यू Are showing you that people come in your life to uh, to trigger you and and bring this out of you. वो अंदर तो है ना वो अंदर तो वो चीज है ना कि कोई अगर आपको चैलेंज करता है आपके वे ऑफ लिविंग पे या किसी पे आज आपके हस्बैंड ने चैलेंज किया कल को कोई और चैलेंज कर देगा कल को परसों कोई और चैलेंज कर देगा तो अगर कोई आपको वो चैलेंज कर रहा है तो आप ट्रिगर तो हो रहे हो ना तो कहीं ना कहीं देर इज एन इनसिक्योर अटैचमेंट स्टाइल दैट इज शोइंग आप तो उसको अगर ये बिल्कुल फर्म है इफ यू फील सिक्योर इन इन योर चॉइसिस एंड एवरीथिंग तो हाँ हर्ट फील हो सकता है दूसरा ऐसा बोलता है तो हर्ट फील हो सकता है बुरा लग सकता है कि यार मतलब इज माई हजबेंड उसको इसका तो समझना चाहिए वो ऐसी बात कर रहा है तो हर्ट फील हो सकता है लेकिन ट्रिगरिंग जो हो रही है इतनी बुरी तरह से वो नहीं होनी चाहिए थी तो वो हो रही है तो इट्स इज अ साइन ऑफ सम वुड्स दैट आर नॉट एड्रेस्ट वो तो इंडिविजुअल काम ही है क्योंकि तो लोग तो आपका कप छलकाने वाले तो आ ही जाएंगे and he's succeeding and sometimes it also happens that uh, you know he's like very much short tempered so initially he used to like bang his head and uh, you know stamp his foot on the ground to make his point uh, across me you know like i am supposed to listen to whatever he is telling so if i am not listening i initially i used to get scared but then i overcome that and whenever he starts doing all this to get control over me i started laughing you know i mean this also i i came across this i mean uh, gradually i started like feeling funny each time he tried to show his anger in that particular fashion when he is not able to uh, control me or you know uh, scare me then he tries to do all these kinds of nonsense also so i mean i don't know i really don't know how to tackle with this man okay so when we did the healing mind block um were you participating okay. at that time yes 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 were you fully present okay yes okay. Okay. so I've been asking the feedback and all that in the group. So uh, you never shared anything. It catches your attention. So many people have been sharing the yeah. changes that they have been observing, but you have not said anything. I don't think there is anything strongly, anything significant. I don't think there is anything strongly, anything significant. I don't think there is anything strongly, anything significant. I don't think there is anything strongly, anything significant. I don't think there is anything strongly, anything significant. so um, we did the we did the split integration and reparenting with everyone yeah now it was the same thing done with all 15 people 
but then some are telling ki these are the changes i have been observing and and you know many people are sharing that ki the changes that they are observing how calm they are feeling how settled they are feeling people are talking about and mm-hmm. then some people are also saying ki they are, they have it ab uh, kaam to same hi hua tha sab logon ke sath Mm-hmm. So, so अगर नहीं हो पाया वो तो देन यू टेल मी देन आई कैन गाइड यू फर्दर ना कि क्या करना है या आई वाज ट्राइंग टू फील कि क्या मुझे कुछ ऐसा फील हो रहा है देन ओनली आई वुड हैव मैसेज इन द ग्रुप क्योंकि मैं कुछ समझ नहीं आया अभी तक तो आई डिडंट मैसेज एनीथिंग इन पर्टिकुलर तो तो यही है ना कि यू आर नॉट सीइंग दीस चेंजेस सो एज आई वाज आस्किंग कि लास्ट वन वीक में क्या चेंज हुआ है तो you could have said na ki koi change nahi aa raha hai but i am feeling what or whatever the case is then i could have guided you further na yeah so theek hai we will continue yeah. that chat um, because unless i know then agar main mere ko koi batayega nahi to main to assume karunga na tab theek hi hai okay hmm. yeah it okay right. so and understand what i am trying to say here to you is ki um कि हैव फेथ कि ये मेडिसिन अगर बाकी सब लोगों के लिए काम कर रही है तो मेरे लिए भी काम कर जाएगी है ना सो व्हेन यू जॉइंड इट एट दैट टाइम पर यू हैड डाउट्स और वट एवर यू हैड आई डोंट नो लेट्स लेट्स अज्यूम दैट यू हैड डाउट कि ये काम करेगा या नहीं करेगा hmm. लेकिन अब तो लोग बता रहे हैं ना आपको ग्रुप में तो अब तो एटलीस्ट आपके पास प्रूफ तो है ना कि हाँ ये वर्क खैर जो लोग ग्रुप में वो तो बता ही रहे हमें तो बहुत सारे लोगों ने अलग से भी बताया है सो इट्स नॉट दैट आई एम आई एम नॉट ट्राइंग टू प्रूव दिस आई एम जस्ट ट्राइंग टू से कि एटलीस्ट आप उनकी बातों से थोड़ा इतना फेथ तो ले सकते हो ना कि हाँ ये वर्क तो कर रहा है तो मेरे केस में नहीं किया है तो शायद मैंने दवाई ठीक से नहीं खाई होगी है ना तो तो देन आई कैन गाइड यू ना कि ओके कहाँ मिस हो गया कैसे मिस हो गया तो आई कैन अगर आप कुछ बताओगे तो मैं आगे की कॉन्वर्सेशन करके कुछ समझने की कोशिश करूंगा ना कि आपके केस में मिस क्यों हुआ अगर सब बाकी लोगों का हो रहा है आपके केस में मिस हो रहा है तो तो हैव अ कॉन्वर्सेशन देन देन आई कैन गाइड यू फर्दर राइट ओके क्योंकि होता है इट वर्क इट्स नॉट जस्ट दिस फिफ्टीन का ही ग्रुप ऐसा नहीं है जो मुझको ये फीडबैक दे रहा है दिस फीडबैक आई हैव रिसीव हंड्रेड ऑफ टाइम तो तो इट वर्क आई हैव फुल फेथ ऑन इट आई जस्ट फील की यू ऑल्सो डिराइव फेथ आपको अपने ऊपर विश्वास नहीं आ रहा है तो दूसरे के ऊपर से यू बारो द कॉन्फिडेंस ऑफ दी अदर पर्सन कि चलो मेरा नहीं हो रहा है लेकिन चलो मैं थोड़ा विश्वास कर लेती हूँ ये बोल रहे हैं इन लोगों का हो रहा है तो शायद एक बार मैं भी इस विश्वास से एक बार करके देखती हूँ a chance you know for things to get better because eight years is not a very long or not a very short of time and i feel i should be working on myself first and then if i have change and i'm sure you know i be strong i will not say the word change but i feel most if i'm more stronger than you know in the base of emotion especially and understanding uh, what situations how to handle the situations as per that moment i could survive i'm like i i would not say survive i would live a better life you know with him or without him or whatsoever if if given a chance with him i would love to but if without him i would love that too so you know how what what are the next things what can be done better you know to go ahead and live a better life um well that depends on what you have done so far so i need to know what you have done so far so we can tell you what can be done so it's important to know what you have done what has worked what has not worked so as i said i do meditation and uh, 
I also started observing and noticing and uh, trying to live more consciously. It, it's not very easy. It is hard to live consciously in the moment. Okay, consciously for me, I understand as to live in the moment what I'm right now talking to you, listening to you guys, understanding of what exactly is going on and what we are discussing and what's going on around me is that's what I understand is consciousness. And not being stuck in the past or in thinking about the future at that moment is what consciousness for me today is. And I'm trying to live in that. And also I do chanting. I do But Harsha, that work is done by the So not stuck in past and all that, that work is done by the people who are doing the Oh, that's not the work. Uh, uh, have you attended Unstuck Yourself yet or not? No, I was not able to attend the first meeting. I'm, I missed uh, it. You joined it for it? No one. Did you join it? Today, what happened? No, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Okay. You didn't do it. You didn't join it, right? Or you didn't do it? No, I was in the group. I didn't join it because it was early morning and I woke up around 11. Achha, achha. अच्छा <laughs> हां पर आपने मेडिटेशन में उसका वो ढूंढ लिया तो आप जो मेडिटेशन में ढूंढ रहे हो वो लोग दारू में ढूंढ लेते हैं की बात है हम्म ओके ओके हम्म हम्म तो इसीलिए नहीं हो पाता क्योंकि हम गलत जगह पे गलत चीज को अप्लाई कर देते हैं हां हां एंड इट्स नॉट दैट कि मेडिटेशंस आर नॉट गुड और दे डोंट वर्क we have a e learning journeys portal and uh, anamika has created lot of meditation and we regularly ask people to take uh, advantage of that and all that har cheez ka apna ek jagah hai har hmm. cheez ko karne ki ek jagah hai but aapko kya aapko kisi ne guide nahi kiya hai you are just doing it yourself jo pata chal gaya jaise pata chal gaya aapne shuru kar diya wo karke dekh liya hmm. 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 lekin hmm. lekin yahi kaam aapko agar kuch problem ho jaye physically कुछ कोई disease हो जाए कुछ हो जाए और आपको कोई ऐसे ही बोले हां ये ट्राई कर लो ये घरेलू नुस्खा ये ट्राई कर लो इसमें मेडिसिन के पास चले आप नहीं करोगे ना आप properly डॉक्टर के पास जाके डायग्नोस करके काम करने की कोशिश करोगे यू डूइंग द ऑपोजिट राइट नाउ ओके ओके तो फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट आपको ये जानने की जरूरत है कि आप गलतियां कहां कर रहे हो और आप क्या मिस कर रहे हो तो दैट इज इज एग्जैक्टली व्हाट वी टॉक्ड अबाउट टुडे सो वो वर्कशॉप में यही चीज मतलब यही यही नहीं है ये भी है उसमें और भी चीजें हैं बट ये भी एक क्रिटिकल एलिमेंट है जो हम लोगों के ध्यान में लाते हैं कि व्हाट इज इट दैट दे आर मिसिंग व्हाई थिंग्स आर नॉट वर्किंग व्हाई यू आर स्पेंडिंग सो मेनी इयर्स एंड इयर्स इन दीस थिंग्स एंड एंड नॉट एबल टू गेट द रिजल्ट सो ध्यान में लाने के लिए like same time cheeze karke aapko same result hi aayega alag cheez karoge tabhi to alag result aayega na exactly 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 hum hum result to expect alag kar rahe hai lekin try kuch alag nahi kar rahe aur see try bhi alag karu chalo try bhi aapne alag kar liya main ye bhi maan leta hu ki aapki intention hai kuch karne ki try bhi alag kar liya lekin aapko kaise pata ki yahi try karna hai ha na hit and trial bahut ho raha hai na experiments bahut kar rahe ho aapne experiments bahut kar rahe hai sahi baat hai तो जो चीज एक दो लोग इस चीज से एक दो तीन महीने में बाहर आ जाते अभी वी डिड दिस वर्कशॉप वी हैव अ सेट ऑफ थ्री वर्कशॉप्स दैट दैट वी डू मैंने ग्रुप में डाला भी था मैसेज आप जिस ग्रुप में हो उस ग्रुप में मैंने मैसेज डाला भी था 
there is a there is a lady who completed all these three workshops within a time span of 14 days and hmm. she is like for 14 days no usne pura complete kar liya aur abhi after 14 days where she is she has been wanting to be at this point for last few years few hmm. years se wo struggle kar rahi thi 14 days mein she has come to that point to time nahi lagta hai cheezon mein time nahi lagta hai time tab lagta hai jab हम आ, हम स्टडी भी कर रहे हैं दवाई बनाने की खोज भी कर रहे हैं इंग्रेडिएंट्स की खोज भी कर रहे हैं दवाई भी बना रहे हैं अपने ऊपर ही एक्सपेरिमेंट कर रहे हैं कि वो दवाई इफेक्टिव होगी या नहीं होगी चल रही है नहीं चल रही है सही बात वो तो वो तो करेगा ही ना आप नॉलेज तो ले लोगे पढ़ के इंटरनेट से गूगल से यूट्यूब से नॉलेज तो ले लोगे एक्सपीरियंस कहाँ से लाओगे एक कोई डॉक्टर है जो डॉक्टर रोज के हंड्रेड पेशेंट देख रहा है साल में उसने पांच दस हजार पेशेंट देख लिया उसके पास जो एक्सपीरियंस है आप उसके पास बात करने के लिए जाओगे वो आपका जो डायग्नोस करेगा ये आपको जो बताएगा वो पांच दस हजार लोगों के एक्सपीरियंस है वो आप कहाँ से लाओगे आपको तो सिर्फ नॉलेज ही है ना नॉलेज तो आप तो पढ़ भी लो चलो वो उन्होंने जो भी पढ़ाई की है आप वो पढ़ाई भी कर लो साल के साल वही टेक्सट बुक्स भी पढ़ लो वही सब कुछ भी कर लो लेकिन एक्सपीरियंस कहाँ से आएगा हाउ वुड यू बीट द एक्सपीरियंस आप तो सिर्फ अपने ऊपर ही एक्सपेरिमेंट करके एक्सपीरियंस ला रहे हो ना वो तो पांच दस हजार लोगों से बात कर चुके हैं उनको जो एक्सपीरियंस आया है वो आप कैसे बीट करो राइट तो ऑब्वियसली आप खुद पे ही करते रहोगे तो सालों सालों लगेंगे और जो वो जिनको पांच दस हजार लोगों के साथ काम करके एक्सपीरियंस आया वही आपकी प्रॉब्लम को हफ्ते भर दस दिन में सॉल्व कर देंगे क्योंकि उन्होंने बहुत सारे केसेज हैंडल किए प्रॉब्लम वही आ जाती है कि हम गलत जगह पे घुस जाते हैं हमें एक चेयर चाहिए और हम कारपेंट्री सीखने लगते ठीक है वी डू दिस एवरी संडे एनी वे so you join us next sunday if you can timing to same hi hai sabka so um even if you want like we have also recommended i even ambring has done this so you can do this with the recorded version also so people who uh, join us if they are not able to join then we give them the record so you can do it through recording also the only disadvantage yes, yes. of the recording is ki um you will not be able to ask any questions or any q and a or anything so wo so hum group mein workshop mein kar rahe to agar hum if i allow everyone to just do the thing in their own time and ask me question whenever they want then it kind of defeats the whole purpose of doing a group workshop to utni bandwidth nahi hai na ki hum individually sabke questions answer kare alag alag time pe to for that reason agar aapko interaction karna hai अभी जैसे हम बात कर रहे हैं उस टाइम आप करोगे वर्कशॉप आपके क्वेश्चंस आएंगे यू कैन आस्क अस वी कैन क्लैरिफाई दैट इज द एडवांटेज बिकॉज आई टेल यू आवर वैल्यू प्रोपोजिशन इज नॉट द कंटेंट आवर वैल्यू प्रोपोजिशन इज आस कंटेंट तो मैं आपको रिकॉर्डिंग में भी दे दूंगा वो कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं पर जो वैल्यू आपको डायरेक्ट इंटरेक्ट करके मिलेगी वो रिकॉर्डिंग में नहीं मिलेगी ना so that is the thing uh, this is why i i recommend people ki join hi karo uh, take time out make it a make it important make it a priority ki ye cheeze aapki life mein chal rahi hain to make yourself priority theek uh, hai is sunday nahi aa paaye agle sunday har sunday ho rahi hai 9 to 11 hi hoti hai make make one sunday free for this so plan accordingly and and make it free aur agar bilkul hi aapko ye lagta hai ki nahi ho payega karna hai to fir use the recording yes yes i will go through the recording as of now and then uh, if next sunday most likely or uh, i'll put down the questions if required thik thik thank you thank you so very much thank you sir sure. no problem Uh, any other question anybody uh
Now we can wrap up if there is nothing else. Uh, and I'm bringing for you just uh, write down the message in in the Healing Mind Blocks group. Ki, uh, what what were the reasons? Were you able to participate? Were you able to concentrate? So just explaining a little bit. Ki, उस टाइम क्या हुआ था जब हम बुक कर रहे थे तो विल विल सी कि व्हाई इट डिडंट वर्क फॉर यू एंड हाउ वी कैन हेल्प यू फॉर दैट ओके ओके आई विल राइट इट डाउन हां और वर्स्ट केस रहेगा वर्स्ट केस सिनेरियो में अगर ऐसा रहेगा कि मुझे लगेगा तो नेक्स्ट मंथ हो रही है देन यू कैन जॉइन अस सो आई विल वी विल वी प्रोवाइड दिस फैसिलिटी सो यू डोंट हैव टू पे अस अनदर फीस फॉर द नेक्स्ट मंथ सो व्हेन वी डू द नेक्स्ट मंथ देन यू कैन जॉइन अस अगेन ओके Sure. Thank you. Cool. So we'll be connected to you guys in the group. If you have any question or you want to share anything, you can always post a message. Uh, we'll see you all next week. Thank you so much for joining, guys. Have a great evening. Goodbye. Thank you.